Hi everyone, Angela here. To make this double oven mitt with thumbs, start by cutting the front piece that will be the side that touches whatever is hot. For this project, I'm using quilting cotton that's been folded in half. For a longer one, cut a piece 7.5 inches by 39 inches, and for a shorter one, cut 7.5 inches by 35 inches. Then cut another piece the same size for the other side. On both pieces, cut tiny notches in the center of both sides. For the inner batting, I'm using a product called Insulbright. This insulated lining has a metallized film that reflects energy, hot and cold, back to itself. There's no right or wrong side, and it's not for use in the microwave. Cut two pieces the same size again. Links for the tools I use and my PDF patterns can be found in the description below. Cut two pieces 7.5 inches by 9.25 inches for the front of the gloves. I'm using cotton batting for the gloves. You only need to use one layer of this as it will be on the back of your hands. Cut two pieces of batting the same size. Next cut two pieces of fabric for the glove lining 7.5 inches by 10.25 inches and then one piece for the loop 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Open up the two long fabric pieces with wrong sides up and then place the insole bright on top. Match all the edges and pin or clip all around. If you wanted to, you could cut all these pieces a bit bigger, quilt the two layers together and then cut them down to the right size. I'm using a Brother NV50S sewing machine. This model is exclusive to Echidna Sewing here in Australia. Set to the longest stitch length and then stitch all around with a 1 8 of an inch or 3 millimeter edge stitch. Depending on your sewing machine, you may need to use a walking foot for this project. Place the wrong side of the front of the gloves onto the cotton batting with all the edges lined up. If you're using a directional fabric, make sure the top of the pattern is up here. Place the lining on top with right sides together, match the top and side edges, and notice that these lining pieces are longer. Then pin or clip the top edges together. Fold the loop in half lengthwise and crease it down the middle. Bring the outer edges to that center crease, fold in half again, and then pin or clip in place. Set your stitch length to 3 and stitch the edges of the loop together. You can stitch both sides if you like. With a 3 8 of an inch or 1 cm seam allowance, stitch across the top edges of the gloves, back tacking at the start and finish. Fold the lining over and around the top edge, match all of the edges, then pin or clip around. Next step is to stitch in the ditch along the top edge. You don't need to back tack, just make sure you're stitching right in the seam or just below it and you're not catching any of the top fabric. Stitching in the ditch gives you a nice clean finish and the look of having binding. Then edge stitch all around to keep the layers together. You can just do an edge stitch along that top piece if you find that easier. See how the stitching is right in the seam? Next pull that top fabric down a bit while pressing and that'll completely hide the stitching. Trim away any batting that's sticking out at the sides. Place the lining side of the gloves on top of the inner piece with right sides up and the binding edges towards the center. Then just clip in place. On the center of the bottom edge, fold the loop and pin it in place. Flip the front with the batting side up Take the glove template with the thumb at the top, place it on the left end, line up the top and side edges, and use a vanishing ink pen to trace around the top curves. Then take the glove stitch line template and place it down so that it's a quarter of an inch from the top and side edges. Then trace around the top curves and down into the split. Repeat on the other end and make sure to flip the pattern with the thumb at the top again. 
With the loop at the bottom, place this on top of the inner piece with right sides together. Match all the edges and clip or pin all around. About an inch below the thumb split, pin through all the layers and then repeat on the other side. At the top, from the center, mark 2.5 inches on both sides to leave a 5 inch opening. I'll also mark where each of the bottom edges of the gloves are. This is just so you can see, as you can feel for it. Because there will be a lot of stress in these areas, we want to back tack at these marks. You can also stitch twice around the gloves for added strength. Start your stitching at the bottom end of the opening, back tack, and stitch all around with a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance. Back tack over the glove edge, and when you come around and get close to the bottom of the thumb split, change to a shorter stitch length, about 1.6 to two, stitch to the bottom, pivot, stitch a couple of stitches, back tack a couple of stitches, pivot and continue for another inch or so. Then change the stitch length back to three. These smaller stitches will make the seam at the split a little bit stronger. Back tack over the loop and repeat the stitching on the other end. Stop your stitching at the top end of the opening, back tack to finish, then remove all the pins and clips. I'm using these strong shears also from Echidna Sewing. They're super sharp and they can cut up to 32 layers of fabric. Cut along the outer line, and when you get to the split, cut down as close as possible without cutting the stitching. Then repeat on the other end. Turn right side out, and use something with a small round end to push out the curves. Now because the layers were stitched together, it's easier to fold over the seam allowances of this opening. Fold in quarter of an inch and pin in place. Double thread a needle with a knot at the end. Start your slip stitch or ladder stitch by putting your needle in through the opening and out at the seam. Sew a stitch an eighth of an inch or three millimeters long straight through one of the folds. From there, go right across to the other piece and stitch through that fold. Go right across again and continue stitching like that. Make sure to sew straight through the centers of the folds so it'll be invisible when you're finished. See how it's forming what looks like steps of a ladder? When you pull on it, the edges will butt together beautifully. Just continue stitching and pull tight about every inch or so. When you get to the end of the opening, finish off by tying a knot and putting the needle into the seam and out again. Next, we'll top stitch on both of these long edges. Adjust the sides so that the seam is right in the center and we'll start and stop the top stitch in line with the top stitching of the glove. Back tack at the start and finish and top stitch 3 8 of an inch or half an inch from the edge. Again, these double mitts are reversible and you can make them in the shorter length. With the thumbs, it's much easier to use and not awkward like those flat double mitts. With this longer mitt, you can easily hold a 24 inch wide roasting pan. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and happy sewing.